him in Frazier in Calgary. This is it. This is where it's all on the line. Both teams want it so bad. But after that game two, Simon Frazier, they came back with a vengeance. They are looking to make a statement. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. I believe we just heard that UBC were able to take down UCI two to one on the other stream. That will be one of the teams joining in. They'll play whoever is the winner between Simon Fraser and Calgary. But look at this, we are well in for the Bicken Bands, and with Tristana Band, we finally see it. Caitlin coming back. This is true. It's a smart pickup. She's so powerful in the current meta. She got so many buffs in the couple, last couple patches that she pretty much is the primary pick or ban. And when she's not picked, you have to ban her. With that pretty much still being there, we have to keep our eyes on how this bot lane's going to form. Jana has been locked in for Setnav. And Lulu looks like it could be the possible pickup. Still, both teams not wanting to pick Morgana. Oh, wow. Oh, by the way, Esrof, I don't know if you were able to check it out, but... Make sure yes, mic my mic was <laughs> muted. I'm sorry, Perfect. I have fixed okay. it. Sorry about that, guys. I had it okay. muted on the stream end. But yes, we are back. I apologize for that, guys. I was but... talking to myself. That's what it was, guys. Don't worry. I'm just crazy. Yeah. I'm the mad lad anyways. But yes, we got Aurelia picked up with Rise being oh. answered by Shimmy. Yeah, and again, I, I was trying to say this when my mic was muted, but again, we see some kind of interesting things that were banned out. Kasai banned out in both two games. Lulu banned out in two games. Janna banned out in one game. Irelia also banned out in one game. A lot of different picks and bans here. People trying to focus those other other he champions that we've been seeing kind of take pressure. The Triss ban finally coming out. The Swain ban coming out. Uh, this time a Scion ban now coming out. Looks like lots of top lane pressure uh, coming cool. out here for the side of Calgary since they already have theirs picked. That yeah, makes sense since... You already have your top laner. Probably gonna see a lot of junglers banned as well. Try to make it so that it's gonna be something we don't see. We've already seen Sejuani attack, so Epic Pones are gonna have to go into something that's not necessarily the tank. Trundle is still open. Olaf's Garner could all be take. But sadly, Cindere will not get that pick we've seen from the past two games in Warwick. Yeah, finally, uh, a different pick coming out for him. Uh, Warwick, again, we thought was a little bit strange, but they did I, I'm not entirely sure why they banned it when there's already Aurelia right. picked up, but you know. Well, that's I think it's going to be going into the jungle, possibly, or it could even go into the rise if you really want to. But either way, it is definitely a strange ban. Either way, a Skarner is going to be picked up by Adongo, even though Trundle is still open. Yeah, and it looks like that's going to be the answer for Epic Ponzer, kind of the standard pick of picking up the Trundle to counter the Skarner. Skarner, another jungler we have not seen yet. Uh, with the Olaf ban and the Zac ban, though, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I'm just surprised it's not the Trundle. Trundle does so much more work and pretty much counters what you want to do at Skarner. And you pretty much counter to yourself. You grab Skarner knowing Trundle is open. You leave yourself a little bit vulnerable. Now we got to keep our eyes on what Crazy Alex is going to play in this mid lane. The Galio is still open. Didn't have the best performance in game two on that. So if they go for this Lissandra, well... The earlier stages of the game, not necessarily the best. Once started working with the rest of the team, this Lissandra became quite the thorn in the sides of Simon Fraser. So not too surprised to see them go back onto it. 
Yeah, but not a lot of CC to go with him, I want to say. Trundle, not as effective with the CC as the Zac would be, or even the Sejuani that he played last game. So kind of interesting. I, fe I feel like they might have felt like the Sejuani didn't work at all for him, so they switch back over, but no Zac, so they go with Trundle. I feel like they have less CC than they they, they should have with that kind of Lissandra combo. But we'll see how it goes as a Malphite is locked in as the last pick for Shyman Frazier to go into the Irelia. And this is typically considered one of the biggest counters to Aurelia, at least old Aurelia, where you'd always go for Malphite because a lot of the physical damage that came in her kit. But now, with the changes to Aurelia, you gotta be kind of careful if you're Aelith. You can get bullied around pretty heavily in the earlier stages of the game. A lot of the damage numbers have been tweaked, so Aurelia is not just physical damage. She does have a little bit of the mixed damage from her abilities. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a little bit more of less of a hard counter, I would say. But real quick, guys, just as we're here in the waiting stages to get into this final game, we're going to do a little bit of a shout out here, guys. As always, nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support Collegiate Esports. From PAX East to PAX West and many more events, the CSL wouldn't be what it is today without the help and support from Twitch. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved with Twitch in the near future and be sure to show them some love for their support on Twitter.com slash Twitch and Facebook.com slash Twitch as well. And don't forget to join us on the CSL's official Discord. Hang out, meet people that are also playing games, maybe find new people to play with. Just type in Discord, exclamation mark, Discord in chat and join us in there. And also, I believe you can also... Follow us on Twitter at uh, Collegiate Star, no, C Star League, or you can find everything just related to League of Legends at CSL Wall. You want to make sure to keep up to date with that. Plus, make sure to check out our Facebook at C Star League, and then all the VODs will be posted. If you're not able to watch any of these games or the past games that have already happened, you can check out our YouTube channel at C Star League to make sure to watch some more exciting games. Yeah, and uh, one thing I am now going to point out as well is this is the first game where both supports have exhaust. <laughs> oh, they're changing it up on us. They're, well, they're, it's Janna versus Lulu. Both of them want to help out their AD carries a lot more than actually trying to go for the full aggression, as well as probably being more of a tool to peel, I'd imagine. Yeah, definitely. Lulu. Yeah, with Lulu, you want to try and keep probably the Kasai from coming in or even the Skarner from coming in. And then Exhaust is a really good a really good deterrent for Aurelia and Trundle as well if they try to come in, try and keep him off of your ADC or your mid laner as well. So we'll see how that ends up. This bot lane is, I feel like, going to be a really interesting matchup, though. Uh, just Kasai banned out so often. It, it's going to be interesting to see how she plays with a Janna support into a Caitlyn Lulu. Caitlyn Lulu kind of... Uh, Lulu's like, I would say... Besides Morgan Janna, Lulu's the next step up for like that kind of passive support that you get a lot of. So it, it's gonna be interesting to see how they make it work. And also, uh, Lulu's ultimate is really, actually, really, really helpful if you uh, for someone like Lissandra or Trundle or Irelia that all like to go into the fight. That might be that extra CC that they were missing when they don't get the Zac pickup to go with Lissandra. They might be able to use that wild growth to make a little bit more knockup plays happen after his team goes in. We'll see how the side of Calgary want to play that though. I'm really interested to see that Relia matchup versus the Kaisa matchup though, because Kaisa, well, she likes to get some auto attacks with the Kathleen Rain, her Q. She can actually go around and skirt around a lot of the disarm mechanics that are built in the Relia. So it'll be interesting to see how a race is going to play around that. He can still go for the escape if he wants to go right through the blades and not even have to worry about sacrificing some of his damage. It's going to be a lot on to how both of these players are going to play on these champions since they're a lot newer some of these interactions are kind of a mystery yeah definitely you can kind of see how how little intricacies that may not be everyone may not be able to like understand quite yet with how limited time we've had since irelia came out with the rework but again the kind of it will be interesting it's all new play all new kind of meta happening here with these new champions coming in onto the rift yeah, but Esraf, this is looking to be our final game of the night. This is going to decide who goes to the semifinals, who gets to go to Huntington Beach to play for their chance at the title of the JVCSL champions. Excited to see both teams 
They're so close to victory, so close to being able to get their tickets, but all is reliant on this game. Yeah, one game to decide it all after some really strong, well, extremely strong performances from the side of Simon Fraser in the early to mid game. First game, they made they did really well, but then weren't able to play it out as much. And then they made one big team fight mistake that allowed Calgary to just open the doors back up and end up getting the wind with their little bit more scaling comp when they had the Tristiana and stuff like that. This time, I feel like the drafts are probably a little bit more easy. Even Rise can still do a lot of damage. Kasai does a lot of damage. Malphite and Skarner can set up a lot, a lot of ganks and the huge CC and team fights as well. And Janna's there to keep the Kasai safe from any dive from the Trundle or the Irelia. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams play. If we keep seeing how we've been doing, uh, it's going to be the side of uh, Shime and Fraser taking that early lead. But we'll see how that goes as we are about to load in to game number three of this best of three matchup between the side of Calgary and Simon Fraser. We're gonna see who's gonna join Houston, UC, uh, no, U sorry, University of British Columbia and Robert Morris University over in Huntington Beach. I was looking that up while you were talking to see which are the teams that have already won and those are everyone we have so far. This is the final game to see who's gonna join into the semifinals. Yeah, this is it. The last ticket punch. We'll find out here as we are on to the rift. We'll see if the the tried and true. It doesn't look like they're going to go for the five man gang. Well, maybe tr Calgary. Uh, all kind of like rotating. They, for it. they are looking for it actually. But again, we're seeing the the, the, the safe the spread uh, the safe spread out from the side of Simon Fraser. That's going to keep them safe. Make sure no one's invading their jungle. No one's really at risk of getting ganked at this point. Kind of common collective. Make sure they don't get behind early. And just stick to their game plan of making good rotations, getting people ahead, and then snowballing it from there. And it's going to look like it might be a late invade that they're planning on. But seems that Simon Fraser, they're used to it. They know what Calgary like to do. They're staying pretty far back, not even going into the pixel brush just yet. Calgary have passed up, but they were spotted out just briefly by set button up. Yep, and they're going to get a little bit of gold there from taking away the Skarner uh, little control point there. Get 15 extra gold onto some of their members. But again, kind of passive game here. No one really want to make any mistakes in this last shot for them to make it to Huntington Beach. Exactly, but without spotting anybody, I think Thunzard's going to go back on to the red buff. Just take this one pretty simply. Didongo starting on the top side of the map for Skarner. So possibility of looking for an early gank in this mid or bot lane. Really trying to help out a race on Kaisa. Gonna be bullied around a bit by the Lulu Caitlyn pairing up together. But you get a kill on Kaisa early, you're gonna get a nice snowball that will take you all the way to the end. Yeah, definitely going to have to play this early game a little bit passive because they're going to lose out to kind of the poke that Caitlyn Lulu can do. Uh, a little bit going back and forth, Janna and Lulu able to do kind of trades of their own, but it really kind of comes down to uh, who can land a lot of that early poke and to see if anything happens until junglers show up like last time. And we'll see if we get another big five-man play from the side of Simon Fraser early on in this bot lane. Race was looking to see if they could get more chip damage on the saucy meat. Chunked up pretty heavily by set enough. Now top lane. Did I think in a free tower shot? We'll have a little bit of the split, uh, the pushing advantage over Aleph. So not gonna see an early gank coming in from Epic Ponzer. Yeah, kind of that. Uh, I feel like I really has the early advantage here just because she's more of a brawler than Malphite is. Malphite going to have to wait to get some of his abilities up, be able to wave clear as easily. So we'll see how that goes, but lots of pings coming out, I believe. Did they see him? They did ping him out. They know that Skarner did start on that red side because he did check the Raptors there. Surprised that we aren't seeing a little bit more aggression coming around when these cannon minions come through the lane. So much gold has been transitioned onto them. Usually you see a lot more aggression coming out from the laners. Trying to make sure to deny some of that gold. Effectively, 60 gold at this stage of the game that you can deny. Pretty nice to get you a little bit of a snowball. 
Yeah, and now here we go. Some damage finally being traded from Aelith up top as he hits level 3, able to trade a little bit better with Sundre on this Irelia. But the push power from the Lulu Caitlyn is coming into play early on here as they're pushing the side of Simon Fraser on the turn. But here comes Kasai, and oh, oh, here comes yeah. Dodongo with Dodongo. the delay. He's looking for the gank, the flash coming in. Fracture already connected, wanting to give over the kill, but the heal's coming in. It'll be first blood for Skarner. Squawking, you don't have anywhere you can run. You can run the best you can. You gotta get to Trundle in time. Flash from Zetnav will help to secure the second one for Simon Frazier. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no kills onto the Kasai, but here are still fights happening. I don't know if this is what you want to do over the side of Calgary when it's and a no two mana. on four. No mana for Shimmy, so wouldn't want to really keep the aggression going up if you're on the side of, the, side of Simon Frazier. Well, sure, you can try to auto attack his rise. You're not going to be able to get too many kills that way. Yeah, a little bit awkward to hit with him early on, but yeah, no mana on him. But again, making the rotations earlier on, making sure he's there to help his team out. Again, Simon Fraser really focusing on this team play. I really, I understand how they were able to beat a team like even Columbia College's uh, JV team as well. They 2 0 them pretty easily. And uh, again, this is just, I love their team play. I can't, I can't commend them enough on how well they've been doing, except for that little fall off in game one where they lost a fight and lost their composure. They're, they've been doing pretty well since game two, and now game three, they're up. They're up already. Unfortunately, the kills didn't go to who they wanted it to, but still, two kills early on is not anything to be mad at. Same with two assists. The race is going to go back. Already has the Coalfield's Warhammer. You look over to uh, Squawking. That's just the Brawler's Glove and a Dagger. That's nothing in comparison to what you're going to get out of the effective gold from Kaisa on the Coalfield's Warhammer. Yeah, but a good vision planted for the side of Calgary. They do see Skarner at his own Raptors now, so they will know where he is. We'll see if they try and use this to their advantage. But unfortunately, all their lanes are kind of pushing except for mid lane, and Crazy Alex isn't there, so there's no real gakes for Epic Poser to make. Not at all. Probably wants to see if he can try to wrap around this mid lane once Crazy Alex is here, but their own potential is there for Shimmy and Dodongo. Realm Warp as well. Look how far out Tindere And they're coming is. for it. And they're trying to see if they can get the gank, but nice ton from Tindere with Predator. He's going to try to see if they can slow him down. Didn't land the Fracture. No Impale is there, so no way to keep the CC train coming on to Aurelia. So she'll escape getting the flash trade and being very happy about that. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing for Sundre. Something he's been fairly on top of is avoiding some of these really high-pressure ganks that come to his lane. Fairly safe laner, and he's been able to try to transition that into other things. But here we go. We got Epic Poser oh, cut out. Oh, got to be careful. No Subjugate just yet. Had to flash over the wall. No flash is available for Dodongo to be able to pull up the bot lane. A lot of trade that a Caspian rain from a race is really chunking out and squawking whenever the passive connects. Yeah, and that's the, this is going to be that Janna play style that you see before uh, a lot of, and he's got that uh, W, he is maxing his W on the Janna to do that extra damage for the poke to slow him down and let Kaisa, or uh, race on this Kaisa, do a lot of damage. So, uh, really good synergy from the bot lane of Simon Fraser this time, obviously getting some help early on to get them ahead, and now they're being able to put the pressure on this Caitlyn Lulu, something that they shouldn't have been able to do until those ganks came through. Exactly. And Kind of why you don't tend to see Lulu too often in the current meta. Even though she can poke out pretty well, you fall behind, you're finding yourself in a very tricky situation. You're not fighting enough shields, you're not really appealing well enough for your carries. Morgana, so much, pretty much just fits the role a little bit better. Even Janna, we've seen the disengage that can come in from Setnav and why it's been banned so consistently. And now here's Daigongo. Yeah, look at that. That was the alt being put down by Tsundere, but Impale comes in to try to see if they can go and turn it back onto Tsundere. Not going to be able to blade work your way out of that one, Aurelia. Yeah, unfortunately, uses the alt, does get the disarm off on Daigo, but he's able to get in there after it wears off and uses ultimate. Uh, Malphite did not use his ultimate there, as we will notice as well, and he still has teleport. It could be an interesting thing to see if we end up seeing him make a teleport play across the map. Exactly, he can easily have the teleport back in the lane if they want to keep up the pressure on the Tindere to force the TP out of her. Or you hold on to that, wait for a fight, try to go for a play down bot lane so that you can even go for a potential dive on the squawking and saucy meat. 
Yeah, and I feel like that might be the idea that Simon Fraser might be going for now. They have a lot of their big ultimates up. They already have their bot lane ahead. They're both level six now. I feel like they're gonna be trying to make that big play bot lane. I wouldn't even be surprised if they tried to try to maybe even realm work with Shimmy to bring in Dai Dongo and then have the teleport from the Malphite come in because that just seems to be their style. They're very team fight oriented. They t they find openings and they go for them. They might wait though as well to see where Epic Pomser goes and then try and counter his gank as well. They've done that very very successfully in this series before so we're gonna have to see where they decide to use this Malphite, Malphite ultimate. For the side of Simon Frazier they gotta be careful once Sun Simi does get wild growth that's where Lulu does provide an amazing set of peel potential for squawking even for epic bones or if he wants to go into the back line the slow field that you have really help out. Epic bones was almost caught out by Didongo and uh, run away a little bit his vision is being fought over around that ocean drake. Yeah, and uh, they, they're going to try and secure the vision out. And here he comes rotating now, but here comes Epic Bones are already. They know he's here, but now here comes Look the teleport. Trainer comes in with the teleport. They're looking. They already got flashes out the heel with the lockdown. Wild Growth to try to see if he can help out. Aelid, he wants the target. He sees it in his eyes, but that's the Vanguard's edge to knock them back and keep them in the fight. Trying to see if it can go into the, the unstoppable. Force knocked Aurelia back up into the air. The suns come in. Epic Ponzer could not run away from the battle anymore. Even though the bot lane survives for Calgary, they lost their top and jungler. Yeah, and uh, I feel like that could have gone even worse. The Dongo did not have his impale up yet, so he wasn't able to pull anybody at back after he flashed in there, but they still win the fight because Aelith was able to hold on to his ultimate for so long. Eventually, he uses it to go back in, and they clean up two kills easy as Shimmy is now going to catch out to the Lissandra, doing a lot of damage there, but they're going to take the dragon easily. Winter Squaw getting Alex out of there pretty easily, but like you said, Ocean Drake goes over towards Simon Fraser 10 minutes into the game. Sitting at a 2,500 gold lead, I feel pretty nice for Simon Fraser. We have yeah. to talk about this again, Ezra. We saw this in game one, where they got a big lead. They weren't able to close it out. Game two, definitely stark difference. They closed out very well. So I almost wonder which one we're going to see as the void spotting comes in, goes heavy on to Saucy Me. Yeah, and Saucy Meat with that Zypher there at the end, that W maxing out, doing a lot of damage, and oh, there it goes, and Kathy oh, and Rain lands, and that's just gone. Easy. Wow, what some, they're so aggressive with this Kaisa, when she lands that poke and is able to kind of ulti and jump her way in, it's just ridiculous amounts of damage with the Janna there to help slow and give bonus damage. They're going to push this bottom turret super heavy, they should be able to get it quite easily, and this time, there's no way for the side of Calgary to answer this. They don't have any damage done on mid turret. They don't have any damage done on top turret. And they're going to give over all the gold to a race. The solo first turret gold going to him. 2 0 and 4. He is almost 2,000 gold ahead of Caitlyn already. And look at this. The entire time that tower was going down, the pickup of Riftel came through as well. And now looking ultimate. for the gank of Unstoppable Force. Doesn't even have time to use the Frozen Tomb on himself. Yeah, and he got rooted out by Shimmy when he was trying to use that Ice Claw to get out. Unable to reactivate it and get out. Gives Aelith enough time to just get over there. And now Dodago is going to move up top and move on to Sundre. He's going to be by himself. Here comes the Impale. Impale. Going to go and drag him back into the fight, but does a great job at trying to delay a little bit of the fight. That's the Vanguard Bro, edge. Getting a little bit more poke. He can easily dodge back into the fight if he wants to stun. Going to connect with the pillar to try to see if they can turn this around on a Shimmy. Taking the tower. That Sundre picking up the kill flash coming in from Aelith, but not going to be able to turn it around just yet. The Dongo, so close to death. Just needs a couple more hits. The minions were not aggroed on top of him. We're going to Aelith instead. So it will be a one-for-one -one trade at the end of the day. Yeah, kind of almost as, as advantageous as it could be for the side of Calgary, where they do go end up trading one-for-one. -one, but uh-oh, uh, Sent, uh, or Setnavik Arek is up here top already, making that uh, switch play. They did have Kasai go middle to hold off the lane, and now they're going to put pressure on top. It looks like they're going to go give red buff over to Kasai super early here, and that's going to be terrifying for the side of uh, 
Simon Fraser, Calgary's gonna have to cower in fear, I feel like, as they finally make the rotation up to stop the push top. But they, they're gonna meet they're gonna meet the lanes. 2v2s are gonna move up to the top lane now as Irelia uh Sundre goes down to the bottom lane. Uh, again, doing a really good job as best he can to try and keep himself alive, making the most of really disadvantage uh, like really one-sided affairs. He should he should probably shouldn't have been able to get out there, but he does end up dying, but they do trade the kill. So Sundre doing a really good job trying to keep his composure so far in this game doing the best he can from a from a really behind position uh that, that again kind of a bright point for the early slash mid game of this uh, calgary squad yeah, the problem though is calgary are consistently being reactive to every play coming out of simon fraser they haven't really been able to make too many proactive plays they tried earlier on weren't able to find anybody now they're always two steps behind of simon fraser even the lane rotation was dictated because Simon Fraser were the ones getting poke onto the tower. Now they have to see if they can keep up with Simon Fraser. Unless they find this game over before they even know it. Yeah, again, kind of an awkward position to be in. Well, they're, it's one to nine at 14 minutes in. This this early game and the rotations from Simon Fraser, again, I keep praising him for it, but it's been on point for the entire series, except for that mishap again in game one, where Calgary was able to make a huge comeback. Uh, they have had some really solid play for the side of Simon Fraser. They really have, and they've been proving why they deserve to be in the semifinals. Still, they have to take down Calgary, and we know that Calgary do have it in them to come back into these games, despite being down 5,000 gold at this point. We've seen worse. We got might see more with the Frozen Tomb on it to Alex being popped into the Zonias. He's going to be the stopwatch to keep him alive. He's still holding on for dear life. The Dongo almost falling down. The tower will finally finish it off, even with the unstoppable force. Hitting Trundle wasn't enough. The rest of Simon Fraser trying to see if they can dig down the top tower, but not going to be in time. Yeah, not able to do it quite yet, but they are trading fairly well. There's no mana left on Squawking, already about half health, getting a little bit of shielding there. But I have a feeling they're going to be in a lot of trouble because Sai has the ability to lifesteal and heal up now. And uh-oh, here goes Squawking running away. Epic Pones are making the reactive Epic play. Epic are coming in right on to the trap. Polymorph as well. Erase, can you turn it around, killer? the jump back into the battle but it wasn't enough to help him out epic ponzer is finding these ways back into the game for calgary yeah kind of an interesting play there from a race knowing he was probably going to die that he might have gone for that last hit on the turret it might have been better off for him but unfortunately he doesn't make that play ends up just dying and now there's going to be a push in the top lane for the side of calgary as a little bit more damage goes into the mid lane for shimmy doing a really good job here against the Lissandra. The Rift Herald was pop, was timing out for Dodongo. Might be able to finish off this tier one in mid. It does get that down, so could be a trade of top tower for mid. Gives a little bit more pressure to Simon Fraser. Now the map has been opened a little bit more, and they can easily go into the jungle of Calgary. Yeah, and they, they're still moving the gold lead forward. They're getting more objectives. No objectives killed for the side of Calgary just yet. As again, this is the Ocean Drake bonanza going on here as we saw well, three in the first game i believe we saw at least one or two in the second two. game and we're already going to see two in the third game as well so uh oh That's game coming down the bottom he's got to be careful got the lockdown but the fracture connects into the smite vanguard's edge to try to disengage a little bit but it's not going to help out too much especially with the realm warp behind team not in place to try to turn back any sort of turnaround for objectives so simon fraser get a nice pick yeah, and Setnavek there with a nice Howling Gale to make sure even after uh, Sundre tried to dash around on that Aurelia, it hit her in the middle of it, so there was there was just no hope. I mean, it was four on one to begin with, but good CC from them, good rotations from them. Malphite gets the top turret down as well, and then again, Janna Bloodthirsty last hits the dragon because she's cool, and that's how it works. The, you know? It's a boring build, though. No, it's cheating. You got to get yourself a Static Shiv, a Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity the Edge. <laughs> That's hey, 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 man, Arden Sensor totally buffs the caster as well, so it totally helps out in the long run. And that is a fairly aggressive build to go straight into the Arden Sensor over <laughs> anything defensive as well, but it's also a snowball build, obviously, with the Kasai. They're already ahead. He's got a couple kills, and now this Kasai is going to be looking to wreak havoc on this game just exactly. with the huge lead that she has. And they have Garner Malphite as well to act as the front line. Pretty much incentivizes Zetnev to go for this greedy build. Get the Arden Sensor as quickly as possible. Sure, you can get the wards, but 
You don't have to worry about peeling too much because you're going to be jumping into the front line with Skarner and Malphite anyways. Yeah, you got the got to land those Zyphers from the W to get in there and uh, slow people down. Do a bunch of damage now, too, because he maxed it out first. So it's going to be a really tough time, I feel like, for the side of Calgary to come back in this one. Again, though, they did show us that they have the resilience and the fortitude to do that. They just need to find the right place. Exactly, and this is where it's going to be down to the fortitude of the two teams. 5,500 separates the two teams right around there. Pretty yeah. much benefiting Time and Fraser a lot. They're putting down so much vision control as well. Calgary being suffocated out of this map. Yeah, definitely be having some issues uh, with controlling their own jungle right now as they clear up some of it. But Kasai is also, you mentioned they're 5,500 gold ahead for the side of Shima and Fraser. 2.2k of that almost is on the advantage for a race over squawking again. So, and this time he is on another kind of hard carry. Uh, Kasai, really aggressive in a lot of instances, has the tanks to go in with it, has the Janna to buff him up. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's just going to run away with his game. Look at his build, already getting the Ginsu's Rage Blade as well. Top that off, here we have the Death Dance. It's going to be very hard to kill a race if he's able to get some free damage into this backline. No one locks him down. Kaisa will be unstoppable. Yeah, especially with the Janna for the easy, easy peels going on. And that's a ping on the bear. Oh, no, it's a ping to see that they know that they're over at Baron Clear and Vision and stuff like that. They don't want to lose Vision right away as, there is, as Baron is about to come up. Crazy Alex trying to clear the waves as best he can, but knows he can't stay here for too long because he can get jumped on. So now we have to look at the TPs. Caleb has his available. Same with Jindere. Crazy Alex does not. So has yeah. to be careful when rotating towards the bottom side of the map. If they see Crazy Alex there, if they realize how the ultimate uh, the summoners are, are available for the side of Calgary, Simon Fraser might be able to turn onto a very quick Baron. Yeah, definitely. As long as they can make sure they have the vision and not going to get caught out. Uh, Squawking did finish his rapid fire cannon, so he does have that Caitlyn 2 item spike now. Kind of even footing for the moment until a race goes back to buy. But they're looking to tr get vision around this Baron, and they might be trying to push it. They know that they're ahead, and they know that they should win most fights that happen. So we're going to see how it goes down here. A little bit of vision control is just going to be the, the end of the day, what's going to happen for both sides as Kasai makes your way towards mid lane to help push that out. That's the thing for Calgary. They're getting pushed in in so many lanes. They're getting chugged around by Simon Fraser. They're flexing their muscle, saying that we control the map. You have to follow where we go if you want to make a play. That's a little bit worrying for Calgary. We want to see if they can take over, especially for this Aurelia in a side lane. Yeah, Aurelia needs a little bit more space, needs to get a second item completed. When she hits a two-item power spike with that Triforce, I feel like she's going to give uh, Aelith a run for his money, despite the fact that he's so tanky. Aurelia does a ton of damage, and they're pretty even on gold. So when that second item power spike comes in for Aurelia, we might see a little bit more aggression come in there, or we might see a team fight from the side of Calgary to try and turn things in their favor. But for now, like we mentioned before, complete map control for the most part to the side of Simon Fraser all the objective controls they haven't given up a single tower yet and they already have the double ocean drakes oh a good Ooh. flash there nice flash from saucy meat but the predators been popped they're trying to see if they can get more Squawking has the flash as well two key summoners are down for Calgary it seems that that was the play that was the bait from Simon Fraser they got those down they feel a little bit more confident pushing back into the Baron yeah and they're gonna keep the vision control they see them coming in as well but this could be really dangerous for them because Kasai has a ton of damage on her right now especially with that ardent center Janna behind her they might not be able to even fight this because uh, they're just gonna try and bait it obviously and we'll see how it goes as all five members from both teams oh, are here comes the flash on that is a key person to take down. Caitlyn was eviscerated in that fight. The Baron has been started up by Simon Fraser. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if they try and go for it. I really clearing up a wave here, but that Baron is falling super fast. Oh, Two members already here. On the other side. He wants to see if he can get into the pit, but they might have gone for the pick instead onto Crazy Alex. That is the tomb laid down on himself with the Vanguard's Ed trying to disarm a little bit, but it wasn't enough to pick up anyone just yet. Tundere has to run for the hills. The stun too late to save his own life. Might save Lissandra, but it's going to be the Realm Warp taking the party bus to try to see if they can get onto Lissandra. Not connecting the Void Seeker, so won't be able to finalize the kill there, but they will take solace in the fact that they picked up two kills in the fight. 
Yeah, they did get the two kills, and it was kind of an odd fight because they actually had Kasai fighting Epic Ponzer on the trundle to the bottom as Dagdaigo was almost killed by Tsundre there too. And it was a four on five, but oh no, here Wait, comes Trundle. Epic Ponzer, I don't know why you wanted to go out and try to see if you can stop some of the backs. Maybe it's because Cocking's back up into the fight, so it will be a trade of Jungler for Jungler. Not going to be too much. That's actually a pretty big win over for the side of Calgary. Yeah, buys them some time to not have to worry about the Baron threat uh, this time. Dagaigo got a little bit caught out. Squawking, again, two items by Caitlyn. She does quite a bit of damage. She got that Rapid Fire Cannon and the Infinity Edge. Lots of damage going into the Skarner, unable to survive despite all the armor he had. And uh, one for one trade is something Calgary is going to be quite happy with because they're not going to give over any more objectives for the time being. Not at all. So, Calgary have to just wait by the time a little bit and this fight, but they can't bite it too much. You know, but Kaisa, she can do a lot of work, and they look like they might have jumped on to Zetnav, who was just a little bit too far out. Cloud Drake into the eyes of Calgary, so slowly but surely, they're picking up some objectives, some kills, and some gold. Yeah, and it, again, it, same thing that we saw in game one. Maybe not as effective this time as they didn't get an ace at the Baron pit, but this time they were able to get a little bit pull the side of uh, Simon Fraser two different directions. Some of them went top, some of them went bottom. They still lose up two people, but again, they bait them into the fight. They get a couple trades. They're still pretty far behind, but starting to see some light for the side of Calgary. And again, we saw it in game one. They have the fortitude to uh, make the plays here. They just got to find the right ones. And hopefully it starts off with a fight where they don't have squawking getting picked off right away. Squawking's already picked up a QSS as well. So you're going to be a little bit more likely to survive if the picks attempt to come out from Daidongo. As long as you QSS the Impale, you'll be able to get back to your team, stay relatively safe. So with this in mind, Simon Fraser have to do dil diligence into these fights, make sure that they can pick off Squawking or maybe just go on to Crazy Alex. Yeah, it's possible. Crazy Alex though does have that Zonius now. Here comes the engage. Oh, and Stopful! Uh, Ward in the back line on his gawking as well. That was the killer instinct and they pick off gawking. This is what we talked about, taking rid of him. And they even take out Crazy Alex in the fight. Epic Bones are trying to run away, but those of the second skin with the plasma stacking up to give a killing spree to erase with three kills under the belt of Simon Fraser, they could easily turn their attention back onto the Baron. Yeah, they pushed the lane a little bit mid. They have Shimmy who went back to buy, it looked like. He got a second needlessly, needlessly large rod. He's starting to becoming a scary force as this rise. He has everything rolling for him as well. He's able to lock people down and low, throw out a lot of AoE damage. But there's no way with three people down, Calgary's going to be able to contest this Baron. And that's, again, first Baron of the game going over the side of Simon Freight. This time, it seems like they've get, been getting an even bigger lead like they did in game two, trying to really snowball their advantages. They're sitting pretty. Nash's Tooth has been completed for Erase, so going to be able to level up two of his things. I think he's got everything fully leveled up now. The Kaisa is going to be so scary coming into these fights. Yeah, able to kind of jump around fights, do a lot of damage. If you catch anybody out, that uh, a Cathian Rain does so much damage. Uh, almost a... a Epic Ponzer almost got out of that last fight because the Akathian Rain hit on some of the minions, but it didn't matter because Kaisa does a ton of damage with all these items now. She just does not even care. She's just running around murdering people, especially since she knows she has the backup from her team. Everybody's kind of doing a good job. Malphite and Skarner looking for squawking at all points in time to help catch him out. And then you have Shimmy there, who's probably getting ignored a lot in these fights because obviously they have to worry about a race and they have to worry about the Skarner, but oh, in the jungle, Nope, looks like they're both going to go opposite directions. Yeah, backing off, not going to go for the fight just yet. Calgary, I doubt they could actually win that fight. But how much damage Erase is doing on Kaisa? Like I mentioned, everything has been evolved. Q, W, and E. Getting extra damage from the W, getting the stealth from E, and even the bonus damage of Q. It's going to be very hard for you to control this Kaisa unless you can take her out of the equation instantly. Yeah, and I don't think they have the CC to do that properly, unfortunately. Uh, they have been using a lot of wild growths to help peel, getting a lot of good knockups, but now this Baron push is starting to come into play. Flash pull. To go in. He's going to go with the pull with the Predator, and they get the Zonius already out of Crazy Alex. He might have to use the Frozen Tomb to keep himself alive, but he was locked down, never able to follow up the Claw. And without 
Melisandre, they lose someone who can try to fight back into the team of Calgary as they take down so quickly. Squawking has to flash away. Jumping forward is a race, raining it down with the Cathian rain. And they're picking up members left and right. Aurelia is gone. Jimmy into the base, takes out Lulu underneath the fountain. And Epic Plunger could only watch as he lost his Lulu, trying his damnedest to fight back, but he cannot do anything as he gives the ace to Simon Fraser. That should be the game. They're finishing off the Nexus Towers, and this is gonna be the team to join in to the semifinals for JV, for the Collegiate Star League. Congratulations, Simon Fraser. Yeah, Simon Fraser, the the team that beat out Columbia College's JV team 2-0 comes into this game and showcases how they did it probably with a lot of really good rotations, a lot of really good team-based play, and only one real big mishap in game one. Other than that, they kept rolling. They were not deterred after losing game one. They rolled into game two, they crushed their opponents, uh, and then they just rolled it on through even harder than they did in game one, not making any mistakes, giving Calgary a chance to come back and there you have it, guys. Like we said, Simon Fraser, the last JV team to qualify for the CSL Finals in Huntington Beach. Exactly. And they'll be taking on, I believe it's going to be, I'm just double checking. They're going to be taking on British Columbia as their first opponents when they go to Huntington. They're going to be joining Houston and Robert Morris into the semifinals as well. Congratulations to them. Well fought coming in from Calgary. They made this a game three where a lot of people looked at Simon Fraser, this JV roster, having taken down Columbia College's JV team, said this is a very strong team that you have to look out for. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I have a feeling that all three of the other teams are going to be scouting uh, this team here and realizing how strong they are in the early game. And they're going to have to find a way to keep them from snowballing because they just, they seem to have the answer at all times. They're all on the same page. They make tons of team plays across the map. And it, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to see this side of Simon Fraser do really well even in the semifinals and maybe even into the finals here as they have one of the best team play displays I've seen all season. Yeah, exactly. But that's going to be it for us for our stream today. That was Bad Magical. Joined in by Esra. Thanks for joining me for this exciting game. I, I know I wasn't supposed to be here at first, and I kind of just came out of nowhere. I'm like, ha, I'm here. Hey, it's okay. I did too. I literally saw the tweet from our production manager as I was coming home from work. So I was excited to finally <laughs> see this game. Really good to see some like really strong play come out, even even from the side of Calgary, who did kind of have a really rough time in the early to mid game in all three games. That that comeback in game one, hats off to them because that was really well well done. And I have high hopes for their team coming into the future of CSL in the coming years. Exactly. But guys, with that, we're going to say good night. We hope you enjoyed everything, and we should be back tomorrow for some more exciting games, so make sure to be on the lookout for that. That was Bad Magical, joined in by my co-caster, Esruf, and I hope you guys have a fantastic night. We'll see you guys later on.